before the initial propagatory trailing stops, and he's talking about cues and the spiders, and I would apply this to other ETFs too. Uh, by the way, cer certain ETFs can be a little trendy at times. I, JNUG, which is kind of um, shocking to me, can actually, when it trends, it can really trend. Now, it might whipsaw a lot here and there, but every now and then you can catch a pretty good trend in something like JNUG. But anyway, for initial profit targeted trailing stops, would the methodology still call to have an IPT at half for half the position and let the market take you out the second half? Yes. Okay. So even though I'm trading intraday, my goal is to do some intraday trend trading. I probably need to sit on my hands a lot more. I'm really good at it. And then I give up all the money and then I'm really good at it again. So anyway, um, so no, we're not, we're not trying to get in, hold the full position. What I'm trying to do or trying to accomplish is get in, take partial profits and have that stop move to break even. By the way, he kind of alluded to holding positions overnight. Do not trade for short term. Do not trade short term any market. Let me, I need to work on my English on that. But <laughs> what I'm saying is a pure short term trading system simply doesn't work. Okay. And I was really into early in my career thinking that I could figure out a way to trade for short term. If you're trading and holding positions overnight, you're going to get whacked sooner or later. That's one of the few things I can guarantee in this business. However, if you're holding, willing to hold longer term, you're also going to capture some amazing gains, like that 420% gain earlier in that uh, shitcoin, TIA, or maybe a couple hundred percent gain in a, in a stock over a year or so is possible. And if you do get whacked, and you will get whacked on occasion, at least you make enough money to pay for that spanking that you got overnight. And remember, something bad can happen overnight. And today was a perfect example. I came in, a futures are down 90-something points. So at 90 points, that's a $4,500 $4, loss just on one contract for the E-mini. So that's kind of crazy. So yeah, if you're interested in trading, you want to take partial profits and trail the stop higher. Just like position trading, the IPT, initial profit target, is going to equal your entry plus your stop distance. So you're trading, and this might be a little tight, but let's say you're trading something like Lab D and using a 10 cent initial profit target, I'm sorry, a 10 cent protective stop, well, then you could set a an IPT for 10 cents, okay? Every now and then, I try to finagle the system a little bit, and I don't actually have a system, so it's just, that's kind of metaphorically speaking, but I might try to use a little bit tighter stop and a little bit wider initial profit target, but that, that has problems in and of itself because the noise statistically is more likely to stop me out than hit that initial profit target. But as a general rule, Give them enough room to where they can, they have enough room to trend, and then you have that initial profit target in there, which is again, it's the entry plus stop distance. And yes, ideally, you want the market to be trending longer term in your favor, so you want to have the wind in your sails, so to speak, unless you're you're looking at a major reversal from an oversold situation where the VIX is ridiculously high or any other metric you're using to help you time the market is there. So the bottom line is, you know, after I put up, put together all this, I'm getting ready to go live. I'm thinking the bottom line is I'd like to talk you out <laughs> of intraday indice index trading. Now for position size, he's am I looking at the daily risk, the daily volatility? Well, I mean, that's in the back of your head, right? And are we managing the volatility based on the hourly charts? Well, it all depends because sometimes the volatility and he's he's on to something here. The volatility can expand quite a bit on an intraday chart. Like I just said, 10 cents on something like Lab D. Well, there might be days like today where, where 10 cents is just kind of noise on that one alone, and you could stop that noise alone. But many other days, that's enough room. Something like the Sox S, I guess, maybe a half a point 
I'm trying to think of some of the stop sizes I'm currently using in these markets. And I'll be happy to give them to you as I if, if there's a particular market. Now, in the core methodology, we're risking 2%. That's if stopped out. It's not a 2% stop. Not We don't get in and put a stop 2% below the market because I can all but guarantee that I'll get hit. What we're doing is we're risking 2% of the entire account. So in, in, in the 100K model, 2% would be $2,000. So if you're going to day trade, I would keep the risk very, 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 very small because it adds up fast. If you lose $100 a day day trading, that's $25,000 a year. If you use a thousand, if you lose $1,000 a day, then that's $250,000 a year. So even if you had a sizable account, and you're only trading 1% of that account, okay? $1,000 a day, you have a string of bad days, which can happen. It adds up really, really, really fast, okay? So again, his for max risk, does it take 1% or more, two to 3% since ETFs don't move as much? No, I would risk a, a, a minuscule amount. I would trade at such a small size to where it almost seems meaningless if you're gonna do this type of trading. Now, stop placement is based on the pattern. So if you're trading an opening gap reversal, then maybe the opening range, below the opening range, the low of the day, plus a little wiggle room might be a good place for a stop. Now, triggering an entry, besides the bow tie being aligned, is another trigger such as 50 simple moving average, SMA use, or does the methodology use a 230 EMA. Again, I don't really have a defined methodology for day trading or intraday trading, as I like to call it. Um, I like to look at the 30 minute charts. And the reason I got to 30 minute charts, as I've said a thousand times, was I was looking at a five minute chart once and I, for e minis, and I found myself chasing my tail quite a bit, becoming the definition of insanity. Win a little, lose a little, win a lose a lose a lot, lose a lot, win a lot, win a little, lose a little, you know, in and out, in and out, in and out. And by accident, I changed my charts to 15 minutes and I went like three days without a trade. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Something's wrong. Third day I made money. I think the fourth or fifth day I made money again. And then I realized that I was I was seeing the forest more, so to speak, than the trees and not as caught, not as caught up in the noise. Now he keeps mentioning hourly charts. I actually use a 30 minute chart for what it's worth. Now, sometimes you just might want exposure, okay? There are days when I'm long a few stocks and I'm not trying to hedge, okay? Don't get me wrong. But I'll look at the market and the market all of a sudden begins to tank and I might put on some futures contracts just because it's the market's tanking. That gives me some initial exposure to the short side. Then I can kind of figure out where I want to go from there. Those S&P contracts or the e minis or incredibly choppy and volatile and efficient and it's it's uh it's hard for me as a trend follower because i want to just hold on to them all day in a lot of cases i probably should be taking the gift horse of the of the quick profits as opposed to hanging on so it's it's a very complicated market to trade again i'm trying to talk you out of trading intraday especially in the S&P 500 and the Qs or other indices when it comes to intraday moves, right? Because they're choppy. Now, there's cases where you might want to trade a breakout after a fake out. I think I mentioned this earlier. Let's say the market breaks down. It looks like it's headed straight down. And all of a sudden, it begins to rally. Then it goes takes off. So it shook out a lot of people, takes right back off or like a false breakout comes in hard, that second entry above that, that fake out move. The old saying, the early bird gets the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. The second mouse type of signal might be something you wanna think about. Um, if you're trading, especially if you're trading an individual issue, but this does work with ETFs, and I would recommend you look at the daily ETFs. And one thing I've been kind of noodling with lately and sometimes you don't know to hindsight, obviously, but I like to look at Lab U and Lab D, obviously, Sox L, Sox S, and what are the other ones? J Nugget, J Dust, and Gush and Drip. 
and I, I seem to look, I tend to look at the semis more than anything, but those are the four main ones. And when I look at these all on one screen, I ask myself, what's the play of the day, if any? If one of them is really, really moving, it has a bigger range than the rest, that's the one that I might want to be in. If you're in a fantastic market, you might just want to be thinking about being the stronger pairs, um, the up or down, whatever the case may be. And I do keep one quote window up, uh, a watch list up, I should say, in one of the windows where I'm just looking at the strongest ones of the day. And that plus looking at the four major ones to figure out what's the play of the day, which one should I be in. And that's where the real money is. It's like if I if I went back and looked at my trades, sometimes like socks and sometimes like J-Nug, like I love J-Nug when it trends. It doesn't always trend, but like J-Nug, which, which is odd because it's gold stocks and gold stocks to the shop around because they're commodity related, right? But something like JNUG, something like Soxel, and even just a small position size, I'm shocked when you catch a really big move in those, it can really add up, even at a small position size. So that's another thing to kind of kind of think about there. All right, Jeff says indices are good for using options. Yeah, I, I do I do noodle around with zero DTE options, and I need to track it a lot better than I do. I don't make a lot of money in zero DT options. It's probably it seems like it, it it seems like a scratch, but every now and then I'll do pretty good. And with a zero DT option, something like XSP, they're often really too expensive to buy. But every now and then, if you're looking at the chart and you're saying, okay, this market looks like it's headed higher, it could easily go one or two strikes past this particular strike. So I might I might go ahead and 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 take a little stab at that. The beauty of something like XSP. It's kind of a white elephant. Uh, I, I know it kind of sucks you in because it's there's a, it's like candy, right? But you're looking at it like, oh, it's fifteen, you know, it's fifteen dollars a contract, fifteen cents, which is fifteen dollars. So it's like, ah, you know, let's 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 buy a few of those or whatever the case may be, and I'm only risking X amount or whatever. And then what I'll do is I'll instantly flip out half of those for a double. And sometimes it, it isn't that often. I don't want to make it sound like it's that easy. I'm just throwing out some ideas if this is what you want to do. And I'm working on it. But one of the things is, especially like with the, with the zero DTE XSP options, is every now and then a market's really looks like it's getting ready to take off or getting ready to move. And those out of the money options might be two or three cents, maybe three cents. And you could pick up 20 of them or something, or just a, however, you, however many you want, obviously, whatever you're, you're comfortable risking, especially if a market is already moving and you're kind of from a position of strength and you're not just throwing money out there for to throw money out there and put in like an order immediately to flip out half of those at a double. And many times I've established free positions doing that. The problem is a lot of days these things are too expensive to trade. It's kind of a feel thing. I'm still working through that. I don't have all the answers. If I did, I'd let you know. Everything I do, by the way, I, I fully disclose as far as like the position trading, the day trade, not but uh, but the intraday trading is something that I'm working on, and that's a lot harder uh, to to teach and to do. And a lot of times, I just tell myself, "What the hell are you doing by doing these things?" It's like you're you're kind of glued to a screen. You got the tickeritis and all. So again, I'm stuck here, and so I I do watch the markets a lot. So I do find myself doing these trades and I have to be careful not to. And again, like I said earlier, watch the range and stuff. Okay, so indices are good for using options, small spread, and you don't get much slippage and you can have lots of volume so you don't get stuck in a trade. If you're selling time decay, works for you. Uh, I would, yeah, I'd be careful selling options. That's that's a that's a way to have a, a very brief, but a brilliant career or brilliant for brief career might be the better way of saying that. So be really, really careful if you do that. And yeah, the the I have a what I call, and it's something again I haven't fleshed out other than by feel. But part of the race to the finish thing I mentioned earlier is I look at uh, I'm in Central Time, so I look at I have a little alarm goes off at 2:40 every day, which is 20 minutes before the close. I look at those e-mini options 
about 10 points or so out of the money because that's like a flash in the wind with the D mini, a fart in a window unit, you know? It's like that. You can move that far. And sometimes those things are really, 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 really cheap. The problem is, as Jeff's saying here, is XSP options are ca are cash settled. So you don't get stuck with the shares. I've been I've been had I've had E minis put to me and like, oh crap, I don't want all these E minis, you know, because you can really get into a lot of trouble really fast. So that's a little harder to manage. But yeah, the beauty of those XSP options, and again, they seem to be expensive for the most part and not worth it because somebody who knows options probably like Dave, you traded that, you're crazy. But every now and then they seem like they're worth it. And I lost money trading them today, but I did. I I probably would have done okay if I wouldn't have gotten greedy said no trader ever right by buying some puts late in the day when it looked like the market was kind of rolling over and then immediately putting an order to sell half so i immediately established a free position so yeah xsp options zero dte xsp difficult to trade but the beauty is i just put them on and ride them to the close and and sometimes and again i'm not recommending you do this but sometimes within the last minute of trading the last five minutes of trading I'll put on some S and G options in the in the XSP, and you would never do that in a million years in like an E mini option or something. Well, if you could, you can't do it zero zero, zero DTE, but let's say you could um, anywhere else. You don't want to be buying options that late in the day and get stuck with the shares. And there we are, zero DT options when they aren't too expensive, and the market is trending or reversing. Sometimes it's kind of like a trader's feel. You could see the market beginning to turn, and you're looking at those options, and you're like, well, those options look like they're pretty damn cheap. I think I might go ahead and pick up some for, and this is mostly S and G type trading. Occasionally, I'll do a ratio spread, but that gets kind of tricky, and I hadn't figured that out just yet. And one thing in trading is you really need to stick to your wheelhouse. Stick to your wheelhouse. So this is kind of like a side project I've been working on for a few years here. The bread and butter, and the main thing I do, and recommend you do too. Is the position trading where you're you're hanging on to positions as long as possible and when we get it we get into a nice rip roaring bull market you'll have these positions that are making so much money you don't want to mess with all this other stuff or you don't need to for trailing stop this is a methodology continue to use a hard stop now i don't have a specific methodology again for day trading some of, I, I can show you little things i do like ogres and such but i don't have a specific methodology per se so what I do is one thing I like is I like automated trailing stops. Now I, I got I took a lot of trouble using these in Forex years ago because Forex tends to be a lot more spiky, super efficient, right? But a lot more spiky. And it would spike up and my stop would spike up and I get stopped out and then I watch the market take off without me. That's another story. For the most part, I do really like these automated trailing stops. And then I set an order at the initial profit target. So that's how I play that. Okay. Anything, any questions on that? I know I wasn't too good of a salesman on this. I just want to throw out some ideas. And I would I would recommend you learn how to swing to intermediate term trade, okay? Hold a, but make sure you're holding a piece longer term to make it all worthwhile. I'd recommend you do that first before venturing into the intraday stuff. 